So what's your name? Stephen. Stephen, and you said you were brought up in Church of God. Church of God. And so what do you believe? What did they teach you to believe about Jesus Christ? They did, uh, he died on the cross. Okay. Um, why did he have to die on the cross? Or according to that, to uh, save mankind. To save mankind? Uh, from what? Or again, according to that, from hell. To save mankind, according to them, from hell. Uh, why, why, what were you taught about hell as far as why you would go there when you were brought up in church? Basically, if you didn't uh, ask for forgiveness. Okay. So, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. So, that's why we die. That's why bad things happen because of sin. And so, it's, it's, it's because of sin, which is why mankind goes, goes to hell. Um, God said that He prepared hell for the devil and the devil's angels. His will was never for any man to go there, but because they disobeyed and sinned against God, um, they end up in hell. Uh, God didn't want that to happen, so He sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay the sin debt on the cross of Calvary. Is, did you learn all that growing up in church? Okay. So you've heard the Gospel, which is you're a sinner. Because of your sin, you're separated from God. Um, but God sent His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay your sin debt. And it's a free gift offered to whosoever would believe it. That All that's familiar to you? Yep. So, what happened? Why did you walk away from that? Or why didn't you believe that? I got to studying the Bible deeper and saw inconsistencies saw where it was contradicting itself, saw the hypocrisy of the church. What type of hypocrisy in the church was a problem? People would say they were one thing and then it was completely different. The way they would act, the way that uh, they believed that they were better than others just because they went to church. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is hypocrisy everywhere though. I mean, I don't know where you work, but I'm assuming you had a job, and there's probably hypocrites at work, but you don't quit your job. I'm, I'm assuming that you have places that you shop at, and there's hypocrites there, but you don't not shop. So what is it about church that makes it different, that it gives you a different feeling about the hypocrisy? Because it's right out in the open, where at work, I don't deal with people. I stay away from them. Yeah. I notice on your shirt it says 666. Um, or what is your belief now? What is your worldview now? Satanist. You're a Satanist. So you worship? No. That's the <laughs> common misconception about Satanism. Okay, so what do you worship? What do you believe? Or who do you worship? And who, who do you believe in? We are our own God. We create what happens in our life. You create what happens in your own life. So you're your own authority. Yep. Okay. So, if you were to die today, you get to determine, as your own authority, what happens to you. I guess. What if you're wrong? And I'm wrong. Does that concern you? So, your ability to reason and your ability to say that you're your own God, where does that belief system come from? How are you able to process those thoughts? It has to be, um, there has to be an outside source that allows you to reason. Where does your reasoning come from? Just what I feel is right. What you feel is right. And how do you know that it's right? No, I just live life the way that I do. So by your own admission, you really don't know for sure what is true and what isn't true. I guess. But you know that you know that you walked away from the church because there were hypocrites in the church, and because um, you read the Bible on your own, and you came up with inconsistencies. Can you give me some for instances? I'm not off the top of my head, it's been probably five, six years since I've ever picked it up. Yeah. Will you ever consider what Christ did for you? Because there's two things that make biblical Christianity different from any other belief. And I know I'm putting you on the spot on this as a quiz, but 
what do you think those two things are? I don't know. There's two things that I want you to go home with that make biblical Christianity completely different from every other belief system. One is God gives man merit. Man can't give God merit. In other words, all religion says, I will do something to merit worth. And biblical Christianity says, I can do nothing to merit worth. All of it comes from Christ and what He did on the cross. That's one key difference. So in your belief of Satanism, which you say you don't worship Satan, you worship yourself, um, there's got to be inconsistencies and hypocrisies in your life. Yeah. Probably. But you give yourself a pass, but not the church a pass, because why? I mean, I don't really give myself a pass. I, like I said, I just live life in the way that I see it, it needs to be. And... Right. Um, so one is you can't merit worth, and then the other one that makes... Uh, biblical Christianity different from every other worldview or belief system or even religion is that uh, there's a resurrection. So when you die, that's not it. Christ rose from the dead and so he defeated death. All of the other prophets or so-called little G gods have all died and they stayed there. You and I were made in the image of God. So we have three parts. We have a body of flesh, which is kind of like our clothes. We, we put on clothes. Our flesh is kind of clothes for our uh, for our soul and our spirit. So our body goes where when we die? It goes in the ground and rots. It goes in the ground and rots. Spirit goes back to our Creator. I'm sure you can somewhat agree with that. If we have one. And then your soul is what will spend eternity either separated from God or in the presence of God. And that's why we're out here to really key in on someone's soul. And I want you to really consider, um, really consider your soul and the eternity for your soul. You, have you ever told a lie? Oh yeah. So that would make you a liar. Is lying right or wrong? Depends on the situation. <laughs> Well, if you lied about stealing from your best friend, would that be right or wrong? If you deliberately did it just because you saw 20 bucks on the table and you just took it and it wasn't yours, right or wrong? Well, if it was a friend, I wouldn't do it. But if it wasn't a friend and you stole it, Right or wrong? It is kind of a gray area. Okay. So I can see your worldview, how you get to make up your own legal system, whether something is right or wrong. But God, if you remember in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, He gave the Ten Commandments. Now, those commandments were given to the nation. Let's see if you remember from Sunday school. Who did God give the Ten Commandments to? Moses. Right. And Moses gave them to that nation of Israel, and it was to govern those people. And when they obeyed God on those Ten Commands, they were blessed, and that land was blessed. And when they disobeyed, those people in that land was cursed. But God told them not to lie. So if you believe lying is wrong, I believe it's wrong because God, our Creator, told us it's wrong. Why do you believe that it's wrong? Like it's going to hurt somebody or not. So if it's going to hurt somebody, don't do it. Yeah. If it's not going to hurt anybody, it don't, make, it don't matter. So, does that concern you that if you were to die, you're not, you're not concerned that you're standing before your Creator, it's not even an issue for you? Okay. Would you... Um, if I had three minutes to live, I had a knife in my back, I'm bleeding out, and I'm going to die. In your worldview, what would you tell me before I pass from this earth? Come on. Yeah. I wouldn't really say anything. I would just try to do what I could to save you. To save my physical life. Well, we're out here wanting to save people's spiritual life. 
and we want you to know that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners. And He died on the tree, Calvary, and He bled out for you. That's why it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In other words, the love of God is magnified in the fact that you're a sinner and I'm a sinner, yet God came down and went through all that He went through and bled out on the cross for you. Now, if, if you were out in the street and one of these race cars revved their engine and started to race down the middle of the street and you didn't see it, but I did and I run across, I push you out of the way, but that race car runs me over and kills me. How would you feel about me? I feel bad that you died. Would you feel grateful that I risked and gave up my life for you? Meaning, being that we, do, we don't even know each other. God, you as an enemy of the gospel, you as someone who's condemned and under the wrath of God, who has lied, I'm sure you've blasphemed his name, I'm sure you've stolen things, I'm sure you've looked with lust, I'm sure you've broken all the commands just like I have. Yet he came down and died for you. That's why he says, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Does that move you in any way? It has no bearing. Well, will you consider these things that we've talked about? No. Okay, well, Let's be honest with you. I appreciate you talking to us. I really do. Thank you for your time.